Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 29th of October. Coronavirus cases cross 8 million in India amid fears of fresh wave. Pakistan Afghanistan cannot afford chaos, says Pakistan's army chief Bajwa. And Pompeo talks Indo Pacific with President Soli, says US to open embassy in Maldives. And now for all the details. India crossed a grim milestone of 8 million coronavirus cases on Thursday with a daily rise of 49,881 infections. Cases in India have dipped sharply from September's peak, but experts warn the current festival season could bring another spike. India crossed a grim milestone of 8 million coronavirus cases on Thursday with a daily rise of 49,881 infections. While the total caseload stood at 8,040,203, the death toll has been low relative to infections with 517 new deaths in the last 24 hours, carrying the total to 120,527. As coronavirus cases surge rapidly in the national capital, Delhi Health Minister Satyendra Jain said there might be a possibility of a third wave of the virus but added that the government is not definite about it and needs to observe the trend for a week. Cases in India have dipped sharply from September's peak, but experts warn the current festival season could bring another spike. Uh, we are seeing a downward trend and what we have to learn about uh, uh, other neighbours, neighbouring countries is uh, they are already seeing a second wave. So we should not relax. Definitely we are, we are also prone for the second wave. What we have learnt in the previous uh, SARS and MERS, uh, the second wave uh, supposed to be the dangerous one. Meanwhile, India's health ministry on Thursday informed that the country has conducted about 10 million tests to diagnose coronavirus in the last nine days. The cumulative positivity rate has been falling progressively as testing has increased and it has touched 7.54% as of October 29. Residents in Indian capital New Delhi complained of breathing difficulties on Thursday as the deteriorating air quality pushed the index to hazardous category. The Delhi government on Thursday launched a mobile app for registering complaints about violation of anti-pollution norms in the city as part of its action plan to fight air pollution which has become an annual crisis amid onset of winters. The deteriorating air quality in Indian capital, New Delhi, pushed the index to hazardous category on Thursday, with the air quality index reading to 395 early in the morning. Any reading above 100 on the scale of 500 is considered progressively unsafe for health. As pollution spiked, the India Gate War Memorial and the Akshardham Temple were blanketed in smoke while vehicles and trains were seen plying amid thick smoke. Residents said they were facing problems in stepping out for their daily activities due to the rising pollution. पिछले चार पांच दिनों से यहाँ पे pollution बहुत कुछ ज़्यादा है और मैं पिछले एक महीने मनाली में था जब मैं वहाँ से वापस आया था मैंने देखा अंबाला से लेकर यहाँ तक पूरा stubble burning हो रहा है जिसकी वजह से बहुत pollution हो रहा है India Gate भी दिखाई नहीं दे रहा है और राष्ट्रपति भवन भी दिखाई नहीं दे रहा है। Meanwhile, as part of government's action plan to fight air pollution, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Thursday launched Green Delhi mobile application, which will enable users to register complaints about violation of anti-pollution norms, including burning of waste, industrial and dust pollution. आप देख रहे हैं कहीं इंडस्ट्रियल पोल्यूशन हो रहा है कहीं कोई वेहिकल है वो वेहिकल बहुत ज़्यादा पोल्यूशन कर रहा है कहीं किसी और वजह से डस्ट कंस्ट्रक्शन का डस्ट निकल रहा है कहीं भी किसी भी तरह का आप अगर पोल्यूशन देख रहे हैं तो आप इस ऐप के जरिए कंप्लेन कर सकते हैं अपार्ट फ्रॉम द ऑनसेट ऑफ विंटर सीजन 
illegal crop burning in farm states surrounding the Indian capital, vehicle exhaust and swirling construction dust contribute to what has become an annual crisis. As anger surges through the Muslim world over French President Emmanuel Macron's recent comments on Islam, protesters continue to rally against him in Pakistan and Bangladesh. India has, however, came out in support of Macron, whom Pakistan and Turkey have targeted for strongly defending the French people's right to freedom of expression. Protesters in Pakistan on Wednesday rallied against French President Emmanuel Macron as anger continued to surge through the Muslim world over his recent comments on Islam. In Karachi, near the French consulate, protesters from Pakistan's major Islamist party, Jamaat e Islami, chanted slogans. Police erected barricades and blocked the street leading to the consulate. In Lahore city, scores of protesters angry over perceived ineffective role of the OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, in the dispute, burned a mock coffin bearing the organization's initials. उसको जो है वो दहशत गर्दी करार देना चाहिए। चौथी बात हम ये कहना चाहते हैं कि हम अपने हुकुमरानों से कहते हैं कि फ्रांसीसी तमाम जितने भी सफीर हैं इन सब को मुल्क बदर किया जाए और फ्रांसीसी मसनुआत का बाइकॉट किया जाए। हुकूमत की सता पर ये काम होगा तो मौसर तरीन होता चला जाएगा, वरना आवाम तो अपनी सता पर ये सारा काम कर रहे हैं। Similar scenes were also witnessed in Bangladesh, where protesters in capital Dhaka burned the effigy of Macron on Wednesday as anger seethes over Cartoon Row. Hundreds of people took part in a rally outside the Baitul Mukarram National Mosque as they held anti-France and anti-Macron banners and chanted. Macron's tough stand on radical Islam and defending cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad has angered many Muslims and led to widespread protests. His comments came in the backdrop of the beheading of French teacher Samuel Paty on October 16 after he had shown caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad to his students. <laughs> In a rare move, India, however, came out in support of French president and has issued a statement condemning the personal attacks against him over his stand on Islam and radicalism. Moving on, several incidents have been reported in recent times where the Pakistani security forces kidnap and torture political activists, especially the youth, who raise a voice against their illegal occupation. On Wednesday, Pakistani secret agents were trying to abduct a Kashmiri youth, but the residents in Rawalkot city of Pakistan administered Kashmir foiled their attempt. Residents in Rawalkot city of Pakistan administered Kashmir grabbed Pakistani secret agents who were trying to abduct a Kashmiri youth identified as Norman on Wednesday. In a video posted by UKPNP, United Kashmir People's National Party, a large number of people were seen smashing a vehicle in which the abductors were travelling. The abductors identified themselves as the member of FIA, Federal Investigating Agency, but the residents claimed that they were carrying fake identity cards. The residents chanted slogans that the Army and the Inter-Services Intelligence is behind kidnappings and illegal abductions of common people. Later, the UK PNP in a statement strongly condemned the attack of kidnapping of the youth by secret agencies of Pakistan. They demanded the international community to immediately formulate a fact-finding mission so that they can know about the state of human rights in both the peripheries under illegal Pakistani occupation since 1947. Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa said on Wednesday that Pakistan and Afghanistan could not afford the risk of lawlessness and chaos as it would have catastrophic consequences for both countries. He made the remarks while visiting those injured in Tuesday's bomb blast in Peshawar city. The victims included a large number of Afghan refugee children. 
Pakistan's chief of army staff General Kamal Javed Bajwa said on Wednesday that Pakistan and Afghanistan could not afford the risk of lawlessness and chaos as it would have catastrophic consequences for both countries. Bajwa made the remarks while visiting those injured in Tuesday's bomb blast at a religious school in Pakistan's Peshawar which killed at least 8 students and wounded over 100 in the northwestern city bordering Afghanistan. The victims included a large number of Afghan refugee children. Bajwa said that Afghan refugees in Pakistan should exercise caution about inimical forces so that they were not wittingly or unwittingly used in terrorist activities as peace of both countries was intertwined. There has been no claim of responsibility for the bombing so far. Some of the past attacks in the region have been claimed by the Pakistani Taliban. However, the militant group condemned Tuesday's blast and denied involvement. In news from Maldives, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo currently on his Indo-Pacific visit on Wednesday met Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in Mali and held a range of bilateral talks to bolster ties. Pompeo announced plans to open the first US embassy in the country in an attempt to counterbalance Chinese presence there. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo took a firm stance against China on Wednesday as he met Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in Mali. Pompeo held extensive talks with leadership of the strategically located island nation in the Indian Ocean weeks after the two countries clinched a key defense cooperation pact. Both the leaders held discussions on a wide range of issues pertaining to strengthening bilateral relations and multilateral cooperation trade and investment facilitation combating terrorism among others pompeo said on wednesday that washington would open an embassy in the maldivian capital of mali for the first time in an attempt to counterbalance chinese presence there pompeo later said at a news conference elsewhere in mali that china had brought lawlessness to the maldives and accused it of illegally occupying territory The comments were the latest hostile remarks towards China from Pompeo's 5-day trip to Asia in which he has been heavily critical of the People's Republic. The Maldives is located over important maritime routes in the Indian Ocean. A musician in Afghanistan's Samangan province, Mohammad, strives to revive traditional music in the country. He laments the folk music has been fading as local TV stations broadcast only western movies and music while hardline groups oppose music performances. Mohammed, a musician in Afghanistan's Samangan province who has been singing and playing for 15 years with Dambora, a guitar-like instrument strives to revive traditional music in the country. Mohammed said that the traditional music has been fading as TV stations tend to broadcast western movies and music only while the Taliban opposes and bans music performances in public areas controlled by the group. He said a decade ago he was invited to festivals and even to villages two or three times a week but in the past few years he only gets to perform one or two times a month. مردم زیادتر علاقه داشتند به موسیقی هر شب و روز محفل سیسو دیگه بعد از ده وقتا اکثر موسیقی های غربی هم زیاد شده و یه چیزا دیگه موسیقی مالی ها کمی کمرنگ شده Instruments makers also echo Mohammed's comments and say their sales have dropped too due to ongoing security threats and insurgency that have damaged music in Afghanistan. They said they hope the government will provide them financial and security assistance so that folklore music can be revived in the war-battered country. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash asianewsline and follow us on twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.